I don't have one. And the reason being is I do so many different films in different kinds of genres and styles and periods that you can't really have a particular favorite because it just really has to do with what is um, what's kind of behind the curtain in a film. And I think it's just a matter of, uh, you know, each film will actually have a, a, a whole different sound palette to it. So um, I like instruments. I think that instruments that go with uh, films the best are instruments that are almost like sounds that are almost deadened. So they don't really, they don't really resonate a lot. They don't draw a lot of attention to themselves. Um, in that way, it sort of like lets the film breathe a little more. Uh, you know, as soon as you get a, a, an instrument or a quality of sound that has more body to it, it, it brings more attention to it. So I think there's, there's definite, definite places for that that, that really um, is called for. But for the most part, when you're, you know, as the film's moving along, you know, instruments that are very subtle in texture. So I don't really have a, um, a favorite instrument. It all just depends on how the, what really goes with the film. When I'm thinking about the instruments for a film, uh, I have to watch the film and really figure out and figure out from the director and the producer what they want, for one, um, and kind of what I feel from the film. Uh, and it also depends on whether it's a period piece. It depends on the location. Um, you know, whether, you know, even whether it's a low budget film or something that's a little more blue chip. Um, there's a lot of a lot of factors that go into that, but uh, you know it's really watching the film and getting a sense of it almost comes to me in a color. Like I start and I'll I'll get a sense of I'll get a sense of a certain color and that that will bring me to the instrument that I'm looking for. For example, um, there was a CBS special that I did. It was Discovery and CBS special on meerkats. It was called a meerkat family saga. The location is Africa. So I use a kalimba for, and I also use a xylophone that isn't, it isn't a Western scaled xylophone. It's an African scaled xylophone. Um, so those two instruments together uh, are ways that I've created that, that sound before. Um, and probably thrown in like a Western clarinet and possibly even a Western flute at times. Um, pizzicato strings actually as well. Uh, I could I could play you an example, but I'd have to actually look around for it. But it would be fun to play that. I'd I, I'd I'd be happy to do that. You know.
color like I would say there would be like a dark green if, if I'm you know might be strings it might be like almost like a synth pad to me um, and I suppose everybody has their own idea of what colors and what instruments bring to it um, but that would be that would be one thing or maybe a uh, you know It's hard to have an example of that. Sorry, I can't really think of much in the way of an example and have it not relate to the film because it doesn't really work by itself. You can't just say like strings are green and drums are red. I mean, you could, but you could try to say that, but it doesn't really work unless there's a visual there. And the visual will sort of like at least for me, the visual will give me the color or the tone. Like what usually happens is I will hear music, um, but I'm never able to recreate it. <laughs> never able to, you know, I'm not like a Mozart, you know, where Mozart can, can like pick out every note and do the whole thing. You know, with me, it's like it always becomes something else but I start with something that happens in my head and then it becomes another thing. And a lot of times it's much better, you know, and also mistakes are like one of my favorite ways of working. You know, you might hit a key, a key by mistake, um, like a half step together and in a, in a certain register on a certain instrument. And, um, you know, it'll open a whole new world you know, just that. And then it's like a, it's like a window you can go through. I don't really use a lot of drums. Percussion a little more than drums. Drums hardly ever. Um, unless I'm working on something that's really action based. Uh, percussion a lot more but what I do and probably what I get from being a bring, being a drummer is I bring that sense of rhythm to other instruments like say if I'm doing an electric piano or something or the relationship between the, the electric piano and the bass and how that moves together and propels each other forward is is really what I what you know I've from drums and percussion, I was able to bring that to, to the music. I usually decide what kind, what style of music to use in a score. Um, it, it, by looking at the film. I mean, the film will really tell you everything. It'll tell you the, uh, you know, if it, and also the, you know, with working with the producer or the editor, you know, maybe it's a period piece. So maybe it's from uh, a different location. Maybe the location's Russia or maybe it's South America. Um, maybe it's something that happened 200 years ago, or maybe it's something that is in current day. So, uh, it really, really depends on what the film is or what the section of the film is. You know, his films obviously can be in different sections and there could be different periods, um, which is really great fun, you know, because you really get to, I, I, you know, that's the, that's the real fun about scoring, you know, is, um, you know, you get to travel, I get to travel all these places and I never leave my studio. <laughs> So my process for creating a score is, first off, I have to get the footage. I usually get a rough cut. Certainly, I mean, that's changed now because there's almost nothing, you know, there almost is no rough cut now because the deadlines are so quick. But um, I would usually get a rough cut and um, start working with the imagery. 
you know, a lot of the script would change, a lot of the images would change entirely. But um, the core element of the film, if you, if you watch it long enough, is still there. So it's just a matter of flushing out then what the colors are, what the tones are, what the, um, the period of the film is, uh, and you know, the instrumentation. Then you start working with the instrumentation, or I start working with the instrumentation. And, and then it's just a matter of starting to experiment which is really a fun process, but it's also totally maddening because there's a, there's a period of probably, it, I mean, I've had it go as long as, a, you know, three to four days where I'm not really coming up with anything, but I know it's there. I know it's there, you know, but it's really frustrating. And, um, you know, sometimes I get to it a lot quicker, but sometimes it takes longer. And the clock is ticking on these things. You know, everything has a tight deadline. The, the producers, the editors wanting to hear, you know, um, the next piece of music, you know. And you're going, oh, I'm working on it. I'm working, you know. But um, a lot of it also does have to do with you. You work with the producer and the editor, get their ideas on what they're thinking. Um, the editor usually has a, um, a lot of ideas, you know, particularly in the last, I'd say, 10 years. Editors are much more hands-on with um, music and cues and what they want. Um, so there's a lot of listening at the beginning. There's a lot of watching and listening to the film. There's a lot of listening to the uh, producer and the editor. And then... I seclude myself almost entirely for the, for the process. Let's say it's a two to three weeks long. Uh, I lock all the doors, turn off the phone. You know, there's there's nothing there's nothing else for me during that time. I mean, I usually have food delivered under the door, <laughs> and you know, I literally lock myself up because that's the only way to get anything done. That's the only way that I can get anything done. And I live it, you know, I sleep it, eat it, and drink it 24 hours a day until I come up with something that makes sense to me and that I'm really proud of. And, um, and that takes some time. But once I find it, 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 it really is a process of, I almost see it as a window where something will happen, like one note, and I will, I will get it, you know. And then it's, uh, it's just in, in a, a really exciting moment in, uh, in creation because then it's like the floodgates open. And, um, and then, you know, everything comes, the whole thing. And then it's just a matter of going through all the cues and, and really working the themes. I mean, I really actually have to not have anybody hearing a, a sound that I'm making in order for me to function. Like I wouldn't be able to have the producer in the room and go, oh, you know, and I've seen other composers do it, you know, and, and they're like, you know, it's very almost impersonal, but it's such a personal um, process for me. And it's almost very secretive. So um, it's, it's really hard to bridge that because, you know, you're going to play your first cue for them. And, you know, you've been spending... You know, or I've been spending like the last, you know, three days just on this one cue. And you get, you know, and it's excruciating, really, because you just don't know. You know, they go, oh, that's all wrong. You know, that is totally like not what we had in mind at all. Um, you know, there's not too many times that's happened. <laughs> it has happened, but, the, you know, 
but out of like, I don't know, 500 scores or something. It's not, not a bad average, I suppose. But um, it's real, you know, because I take it, I do take it really personal. It, you know, it's really something that comes out of me. It's organic. It comes out of me. I, you know, and if they don't like it or if they, even, you know, it's, it's hard for me to even take suggestions sometimes, you know, but you have to. I mean, that's the gig. You have to, it's a service gig, so you really have to man up on that one. And, uh, you know, and, you know, show the whole thing and, uh, you know, do it without flinching. <laughs> but it's, uh, that one's a real challenge because there's the isolation part of it and then there's the exposure part of it. So, um, you know, anytime you're in isolation, it's all private. It's like, you know, I, I, I've got everything the way that I want it. And then as soon as I bring it over into exposure, it's like putting a big spotlight on it. And I'm going, oh, that, that, oh, oh don't listen to that part. Oh, that part, you know. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm finding, I'm criticizing the whole thing. Um, you know, it's a, it's a really... Uh, it's a touch and go, very you know, um, interesting process that that takes place where you get from that inception to all, all the way to the end. I probably wouldn't, just because it's enough work to produce a film and do everything that it takes unless I was very attached to myself doing the music on top of everything else that I would be doing for the film, which would be a lot of work. And it's a lot of work to do a score and it takes a lot of time, uh, particularly if you want it to be good. So if you Someone who's not really experienced with working with loops or working with samples and I mean loops a little more so because they just are loops and you can you can just let them run and then you can add things over the top of them. Um, you know some it just depends on the filmmaker because some filmmakers are talented that way. They can be talented that way and they know what they want. So rather than try to get it out of someone else you know, it, it might behoove them to, you know, do it themselves. I wouldn't do it that way just because I, I know how much work it takes and how much work it takes to, to um, produce a film or direct it. And, you know, you're just wearing too many hats as far as I'm concerned. And you probably won't be able to see the forest for the trees at the end of the day because it's just too much, you know. Or maybe you've got a vision and, you know, you're true to it. And when you're true to it and you know exactly what you want, maybe you are skilled enough with, the t with technology to be able to pull that off. It really depends on the filmmaker um, and it depends on how talented they are with that in that realm and how much they want to stretch themselves. I don't use acoustic instruments that much. And the reason being is the deadlines are so tight. And my library of samples that I have and uh, are just incredible. So you can't tell the difference really. Yeah, you can control every nuance that way. Uh, with, with a live player, you've got to schedule him, you've got to get him in, you've got to get the mics up, you've got to get, you know, everything sounding good. The, the whole process, and then you have to convey what you want them to play. Um, uh, if, if, it's a, if it's a structured piece that I've already written, you know, I have to write that out or print it out and give it to them. And, just that process is, it's a lot easier for me to just do it myself. And it, the end product 
turns out, you know, you can't really tell the difference. No one can really tell the difference because um, the, the technology right now is so good and the, the soundscapes that you can create. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I have a bagpipe player that ca came in not too long ago and that was an acoustic instrument. There's no good bagpipe sound that I have. No good bagpipe sample. You know, they all sound terrible. Um, so, strangely enough, I've got a bagpipe player that uh, was my carpenter. And he's like a, he's like a world-class bagpipe player, you know? And I had a, a piece on um, uh, a show for the Discovery Channel that uh, they called for one. Besides that, hardly ever. I think the, the best way is to really look at a, a film. You know, when, when I get a film, I look at it and it really has to scream for music. And I think that if, you know, if I was a filmmaker, I would approach the film as if it had no music in it whatsoever. And that way you really see what the strong points are and what the weak points are. And even if it's a strong point, it still may need music to enhance it and to bring it up to even to a further level. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of music in film, and television particularly, is used to make up for something. Uh, you know, a scene doesn't quite come off. You know, if you, if you check that same scene without, without music, you know, it's a different world. You put music in, uh, depending on the composer, depending on the music. Um, it's, a, it's a very, you know, it brings the scene to life, or at least makes it not kind of a glaring wart, which it may have been beforehand. And that's just what they got that day. And you have to, you, you really, that's, that is unfortunately part of a composer's job is to almost like, you know, covering up and stitching, you know, behind the scenes. There's a lot of wall-to-wall -wall music that's like that. Um, real live cues, cues that have substance to them, um, which, you know, you just can feel it when you're watching the, the film, even if it's like really well acted and everything. It, it just, you, you can feel that. But um, I always admire filmmakers that can do films with no music in it. Like, you know, like Clint Eastwood, you know, did that one Western. It didn't have, I don't even think it had any music in it. It was like phenomenal. Um, maybe it just had like a guitar theme like every, like two times in the film. If I work too closely with a director um, or a producer, then it's really not mine anymore. It's, I, I'm really just a tool, which doesn't make me necessarily feel good. <laughs> and I don't think that it gets the best result. I think other composers are better suited for that type of a role. For me, I have to dig down and get something. And I can't do that with a producer or a director kind of hovering over me. You know, I have to, you know, and it's, um, it takes a good producer or director to really be able to give a composer the space to create. Because it's really the job, you know. If they were just searching for music, you know, they could just go online or they could go to a library and start picking out, you know, stuff that works for them. Um, but, so, to answer that question, um, I've, I've done both. I've done, I've worked very closely with producers and editors on films, and I've worked not so closely, and it just depends on the filmmaker and what they're comfortable with. You know, some of the uh, people that, that have hired me, they're, you know, we have a rapport, even though most of them I've never seen or met you know, but we have a rapport. 
and um, you know uh, they'll just go, okay, Ron, just take it. You know, just do that. Just take it away. And um, other ones, they have to be more in control about almost, you know, just about every note. So it just really depends on the film, who's doing the film, the filmmaker, that kind of thing. If I was to say something, I would say, don't overuse music. Um, make music important in the film. Don't just use drones to, you know, to get from one scene to the other, although they can be very effective too. It really does affect, uh, depend on the film. Again, it always, it always comes back to that, what the film is. But um, I would just say, look at, think of music as another actor. Think of music as another, as a real, as a contributing part, not just a follower, but just a, you know, a, an actual, something that's very important in the film.